of side C if I divide this figure into a rectangle and a right triangle and find the perimeter of the figure. Okay. All right, a rectangle is a four-sided figure. Opposite sides parallel. and opposite sides equal. It's also got right angles in each corner. Now, do you see anything like that? Every one of you, no matter where you're looking, says yes. Because this room is filled with rectangles. Okay? Rectangle, desk, rectangle, paper, rectangle, cell phone, rectangle, especially iPhones. Nothing but rectangles, okay? And a triangle, we know already, is a three-sided figure. And they can come in many varieties. Um, hard to say what we're doing here, but you can set a right triangle. So a right triangle means one right angle. Right simply stands for 90 degrees. So they want us to divide this thing up and figure out various parameters and so forth. And the only way to do that, the triangular side is going to be over here. The only way to do that is to create a dotted line. This is called a construction line. That makes a right angle right there. So that's a 90 degree angle. And here's the triangle. And here's the rectangle over here. So you've got the sum of the triangle plus a, plus a rectangle. Okay. Now what they said is this. Find the length of side C by dividing this figure into a rectangle and a right triangle. Find the perimeter of the figure. So first of all, we have to get this. We don't know what that is. That's why they give it a letter. That always stands for unknowns, in, um, especially in algebra, two courses from now. But what we can say is this that when you're dealing with a rectangle, this one right here, this box, that's all it is, is a box. Then the opposite sides are parallel to each other, and they're equal in size. And that's the key to the whole thing. Because that means that if this is four inches, this is four inches. Okay? Okay. Now, this side, is known to be 11 inches, whereas this much of it is 8 inches. Which tells you what that is, huh? Mm -hmm. That right there has got to be, well, 11, take away 8, 3 inches, huh? It's got to be a 3 inch side over there. So we know two sides of the right triangle, which means we know it's two legs. Let's just bring that triangle down here. This is 3 inches, this is 4 inches, and we want to know C. For that, you have to use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Length of one side, let's call it A, is 3. And the length of the other side squared, 4, is equal to C squared. So that gives you a 9 there. And 3 times 3 plus 4 times 4 is 16. So you get 25 is equal to the square of C. So what would C be? Well, the number when you square it gives you 25, 75. So we've got the C now. Okay, in that case, what's the perimeter of the entire thing, the two things put together? Well, it's this plus this plus this plus that. So perimeter, just like taking a tape measure and wrapping it around the whole thing. So it's going to be 5 plus 8 plus 4 plus 11. 13 and 4 is 17, 18, 28, huh? 28 inches. Are we okay with those numbers? Mm -hmm. The reasoning behind it? Mm -hmm. This, by the way, we'll have homework tonight on this kind of thing also. This thing right here is called a composite figure. And all that means, just a fancy word to mean made up of two or more others. And 
the others are simpler. In this case, you have a rectangle and a triangle glued together, so to speak, to form this thing, which looks like that. There's actually a name for that. We'll get to it today. It's, a, it's one of the basic shapes, two-dimensional shapes. This is known as a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral simply means four sides. One, two, three, four. And that's one of the rare quadrilaterals that has become popular in recent times. It's known as a trapezoid. Okay, any other questions? Exactly. <clears throat> All right, it says find the length of the unknown side, uh, round to three decimal places if necessary. In this case, they say one leg, they give you a right triangle. They tell you that one leg is 12 inches and the hypotenuse is 22 inches. And so we have a leg that we don't know. We'll call it A. And they say round to three decimal places. Okay. Again, the only thing you can work with when you're dealing with right triangles is what Pythagoras did 2,500 years ago. The square, the sum of the squares of the two legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So it would look like this. Uh, one leg we'll call A, so square it, plus the other one squared, which is 12 squared, equals 22 squared. Okay, now we put the numbers in, see what we got. A squared, 12 squared is 144. Most of us got that from our 12 tables, huh? But 22 squared, uh huh? <laughs> we didn't have 22 tables. So, you know what happens. Out comes the electronics. Now, I have an X squared button on mine, which is very nice. Uh, mine gives me 484. Is that what you got? Okay. Okay. All right. Now, some number added to 144 is equal to 484. That's an addition problem, but we can switch it in our minds into a subtraction problem, which says if I take 484 and subtract 144, then I'll get a squared. Okay, so it's a subtraction problem. 484 minus 144 and so forth. 340. So 340 is a squared. Now to get A, you have to say to yourself, what number do I multiply by itself twice gives me 384? 340. Not so easy to get, huh? When you factor Good. Three. calculators. There it is. You can symbolically do it. You can say A has to be the square root of 340. But that, and three bucks will get you some. So you've got to actually put it into the calculator. Now, on my calculator, um, I do have a square root button. Remember, you may not. Yours may be above your squaring button. Okay, so you might have to push a second to get to the square root. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do this. This is 340. Mm. Okay. I find out that it's 18. Now, they should go to three places past the decimal point. That would put it at 18,439. The next one is a zero. So rounding to, is that what they asked for? Yeah, three decimal places. So rounding to three decimal places, that would be 18.439. So this side is that long to three decimal places. And you say, well, can't we get it exactly? No, actually, we can't. We should write this with squiggly equals, which means approximately equals. We can't get an exact number for that. I mean, you can, you can write this symbol down if you want to. You can say A actually equals the square root of 340. But that doesn't help anybody in terms of calculations. When you subtract the this, this part over here? Yeah. Okay. So what we're saying is this. I've got some number and I don't know what it is, basically. And I'm adding that to 144 to get 484. Well, to find out what that number is, if I subtract 144 from both sides, then you can see what happens. It drops out here, and I get my a squared. That's what I'm looking for. And that's the difference between 484 and 144, which is what we calculated. So, no, I'm not really sure. 
So that means it's a subtraction process. Because the only way to get rid of the, one, the plus 144 over here is subtract 144. And you do that on both sides, and you've got your 340. The formula with A, B, and C, and the square, but to know that you've got the C is the larger number on the triangle? It is, yeah. That will always be the largest of the three. That's true. Okay. But that doesn't help you too much uh, to get the, the A and the B. I mean, you still got to go through a square root process to find it. You know it's going to be less than 22, that's for sure. But that's all you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because that C is the longest number. Um, the largest number, right? Uh, term. That's not easy to answer. Sorry, you're just going to have to accept that C is the largest number. The two legs are always shorter than the hypotenuse. Can you do number 47? 47? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, you find the length of the supporting brace. You've got a mailbox here. And it's on top of a piece of wood, of course, to hold it up. And it goes down into the ground. But there's a brace here that makes it nice and solid. And what you know is this, that this is 12 inches. This would be a right angle. And this is 16 inches. So this is the right triangle in there. And what we want, in this case, is the hypotenuse. The legs are the two things that form the right angle. The hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. So that's what we're looking for. So c squared is equal to 16 squared plus 12 squared, which is um, 144 plus 16 squared, which I think is 256. Yep. So in this case, you just add the two. You just got two numbers there to add, just like you normally would. So just add the two together. That gives you 400. Now, what number, which when you square it or multiply it by itself, will give you 400? 20. Yeah, that's what you'd expect, 20. That, in other words, that is a perfect square. That's 20 squared. Yeah. So this distance is 20. Now, why did they put that brace there? Because they don't want the mailbox to fall down when it gets all your stuff from Amazon and all that, and it falls down, right? No, you got to brace it up. In other words, the right triangles form rigidity. It makes it rigid, okay? Just like it does in that building over there. You know, it makes the walls not fall down in the next earthquake. Have you ever been in the class which has people who are not from California in it and you have an earthquake? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you want to see people turn white in 10 seconds? Yeah, blood drains from the head. Could I have that eraser, please? Why do they need erasers? Those boards are never used. Okay. Any others in the homework? Twenty. Twenty. All right. Okay. Number twenty. It's part of the group, and um, what they do is they give you several different types of triangles. Uh, some of them are <coughs> cute, some of them are scalene, and so forth. And they say, okay, choose the scalene triangle. That's what you're looking for here. So I hope you can look on in your book. Now, scalene means it has three sides. None of them are equal to each other. They're all different lengths. Okay? The shape of it could be anything. But none of the three sides are equal. So you look at that and see, is there anything like that? Well, the little tick marks are what give you the idea of what's going on. In B, you have two sides equal. In C, you have three sides equal. In E, you have two. <coughs> um, the others, they don't tell you anything. So, uh, A, D, and F, those could be stated. A, D, and F. What is, what is 
No, state A means none of them are equal. No, but I mean figure D, because there's a right angle, doesn't it mean two sides are equal? No. Does it look like they're equal? Kind of. No, it does not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no there's no sides in there. Where? No, right at notice the uh, scaling and, and achieving all that kind of stuff have nothing to do with being right angles or anything. It's just a matter of the length of the size. Yeah. Uh, number 18, they want obtuse. Now, obtuse means they're going to have to have one angle that's bigger than 90, but not as big as 180, then you wouldn't have an angle to have a straight line. Okay, so you want to look for one where you've got an angle that's more than 90. Well, if you look, uh, A certainly does have one. See the bottom? Of, here's what A looks like. This angle is bigger than 90, huh? And the other one that's bigger than 90 is uh, E. This is A. E looks like this. It's got, it's, uh, this is an isosceles. These two are equal in length. But this angle right here certainly looks like it's bigger than 90. Um, and that's it. So the answer here would be A and E. This is for 18. Okay, absolutely. 22, equilateral. Okay, equilateral means uh, you've got three sides that are equal in length. Lateral means sides. So uh, number 22, <laughs> so you look again at the pictures. Well, okay, no. See, you can exclude these right away because these mean. Scaling means none of them are equal in length, so it can't be A, it can't be D, and it can't be F. And uh, 18 is, uh, uh, that has nothing to do with anything, so 22 is equilateral. So you've got to go through it again and look for three sides equal. Well, luckily the little tip mark show you that. There's yeah. only one that has that, and that's C. C. Yeah. C. Mm -hmm. All right. Any others? The last one, uh, degrees, uh, number 11. Number 11. Okay, it says find the measures of angles A and B. Looks like this. I have to draw this carefully because this is not a right triangle. All right, this is 78, <coughs> this is 62 degrees here, this is B, this is 40. Okay, now remember a degree, a degree is very small. Uh, if, if you have one of these clocks that has hands on it, going all the way around would be 360 degrees. Huh? A minute is one sixtieth of going all the way around. So you'd have to take a minute division and divide it into six parts to get one degree. It's a very small number. Okay? Alright. But what we know is this. We've got a triangle. And the rule for triangles is if you add up all the angles, they have to add 180. It's kind of strange, but that's the way it works. So you add up all three, and that's got to be 180. Alright, so that's the case. Add these together. That's 102. And again, we're in the same kind of situation. We want to know what V is. What do I add to 102 to get 180? Well, just subtract. Just subtract the 102 from both sides. And that gets it right there. There's V. And that's going to give you 78 degrees. Huh? So that's what this has to be. It's not quite a right triangle. 78 degrees. Any others? Horizontal line, and they form a triangle by doing that. See, these figures, 
whether they're four-sided figures or three-sided figures, are all formed by line segments. And they simply put lines together at different angles, and they get these things called triangles and rectangles and so forth. This is 68 degrees, this is B, this is A, and this one down here is 40 degrees. <coughs> so they want to know the way of deal. And this has to do with some of the definitions we did yesterday. If you have two lines meeting at a point there, and they're not perpendicular to each other, these are called vertical angles. This one and this one are vertical, and they're always equal. So therefore, A has to equal 40. And now you know what A is, and you know what this is, so you can do the same thing we did over here, and that is add up all three, 68 plus 40 plus B, that's got to equal 180. So this gives you 108 plus B equals 180. Again, subtracting it from both sides gives you 108 from uh, 80, or 180 rather, is 72. So that's 72. So this is uh, some of the definitions and, and this uh, triangle formula and the Pythagorean theorem. Any others? Okay, let's go a little further. We're in section uh, 8.3 now. We talked about triangles in 8.2. In 8.3 we're going to talk about the four-sided figures. Uh, and we already have some of those. I mean, we've talked about rectangles since the beginning of the class. But uh, now we're going to do more detail on the four sided figures. The fancy word for those is quadrilaterals. Again, uh, most of this stuff comes from Greek, and, and this is Roman. This is the Roman for four, and laterals means side. Now, there's five major groupings of four-sided figures, five types of four-sided figures. Um, some of them are very similar to each other, but we're going to list all of them here. Probably the most general one is called a parallelogram. And I'll sketch it up here with the ruler to make it look pretty. These are railroad tracks going that way. These are railroad tracks going up that way. So opposite sides parallel. Now it's also true that because they have opposite sides parallel, then the opposite sides are the same length. So if we're going to use the tick marks, I'll use one tick mark for the smaller one. These two are the same length, and a double tick mark for the larger one. OK. The next version of that, and it is actually a subcategory of that, Here's the rectangle. And a rectangle is a parallelogram with 90 degree angles at the corners. So it's just a matter of it not leaning, that's all. That's an easy way to put it. It doesn't lean the way the parallelogram does. Looks like this. So all these are right angles. Still, opposite sides are the same length. It's just up and down, so to speak. Now, a special version of the rectangle is called a square. And then you have a rectangle, but its sides, all four sides, are the same length. Let's say that length is S. Everything is S. And you know we work with these quite a bit. You've seen them 
all over the place. All right, the next one is called the rhombus. And that's a square that's leaning. Once again, you have uh, all four sides the same length, so this is this, is this, is this. But you don't have 90 degree angles in there as you do with the square. And finally, the last one, which has become popular recently, is called the trapezoid. I think these names largely come from Greek and stuff like that, so it's a little hard to trace them all. Now, a trapezoid is different. They can look irregular, so to speak. With a trapezoid, you've got two sides that are parallel, but not necessarily the same length. And two sides that are not the same length and not parallel. So, in general, a trapezoid looks something like this. Now, I've tried to make it so that these are leaning at different angles here. So there's the only thing that, there's nothing the same length here. It's just that the top side, which we'll call A, and the bottom side, and both A and B are called bases. Uh, they're not the same length. And of course, the other sides could be very different lengths too. So the only thing you've got here is two parallel sides. The others are no different lengths. Generally speaking, what you do when you're talking about a trapezoid is you form the height. And we'll find that in just a few minutes when we talk, start talking about area forming. And the height is perpendicular to one of the bases, in this case B, and it's simply called H. And that will be one of the quantities that's characteristic of the area of the trapezoid. This is a, sort of a formula, or a figure rather, that uh, nobody said, you know, everyone says, well, I've never seen one of those. But recently, for some reason, the designers of the extremely expensive sports cars have made the tailpipes in trapezoids. And so now everyone's got to have a tailpipe that looks like a trapezoid. <laughs> Used to be you had to pay a quarter of a million dollars for it. Now you can get it on several A's and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know why. <coughs> They're trying to sell you stuff. That's it. Okay. Now, this is the family of, of, of four-sided figures. But let's talk about things like perimeter. I want to talk about perimeter and area. We're not going to get a formula for all the different things. We'll just do formulas for the ones that are easy to remember. For example, if you're talking about perimeter, remember perimeter is the distance around the edges. So it's a tape measure kind of thing. All right, perimeter for the rectangle, I think we've had that formula before, it's called P, is equal to two times the length plus two times the width. This would be the width, this would be the length. The length's always longer than the width. So it's the horizontal measurement, the width is the shorter measurement. Well, you can see all you're doing is taking this length plus this length plus this width, plus this width, and there's the formula for it. You're just doubling those two, adding them together, here's your perimeter. Square is even easier. This would be S plus S plus S plus S, which is mm -hmm. four times S. Um, that's pretty much it for perimeter formulas. I mean, you can manufacture a formula for a triangle and so forth, but it doesn't, there's nothing tricky about it. There's nothing wonderful. So they don't make any other formulas for perimeters. How would you use something like this? Uh, they're very simple. Suppose you have a very long rectangle like this, a bar, so to speak. And this is something like 9 inches. And this is 6 feet. The perimeter for this would be 2 times the length. Well, the length is in feet, and the width is in inches. Not a good idea to combine those. Um, <laughs> Generally speaking, they want them all in one unit. So six feet, let's convert that. Six feet, conversion factor, we have feet down here, inches up here. 
and this is a conversion between inches and feet, so one foot would be 12 inches. And canceling feet, it's 6 times 12. Okay, 6 times 12, and that's 72 inches. So that's this thing in inches. So 2 times the length would be 2 times 72, plus 2 times the width would be 2 times 9. And that's 144 plus 18, 162 inches. That's the perimeter for that right. Okay, the other thing that's important for these quadrilaterals is area. And again, we don't have formulas for all the areas. We only have a few. That's nice because, you know, on your test, not this Friday, but next Friday, you'll need to have these formulas down. So let's start with things like um, the simple ones. First of all, let's talk about the meaning of area because that's something we haven't spent a lot of time with. It's the number of square units. in a region. Now that's fine, but what does it mean? All right, if you look at four, this carpeting is done with tiles. And the tiles, I actually measured them, are two feet on a side, and they are square. Okay? So let's say we wanted to know something like this. Um, suppose we wanted to have two tiles, one right next to the other. In the wide direction, there's only two. But in the long direction, there's three. Okay, well, you can count that number of tiles. One, two, three, four, five, six tiles. Three that way, two this way, huh? Okay, so there's six square units in that particular region. Huh? All right, if you want to see a picture of it, look something like this. This, of course, is not to scale. Be something like this. This is two feet. This is two feet. And the question is, how many square feet do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six square feet. And it would be written that way, by the way. It would be written SQFT. Or the other way to do it is you can put foot there and then put a little exponent next to it, which is also read square feet. So area is always in square feet, whereas perimeter is always in just feet, or in this case, inches. All right. So, for the rectangle, let's go back here and do the area. If it has side length, uh, so the length side is L and the width side is W. Question is how many square units can I fit in there? It's simply the product of L times W, which is exactly what would happen over here. We have two of, square, two of these squares here. And we have three of these squares here. So two times three, there it is, six square feet. So you just multiply length times width. Now here, because the length of the side is S, and you're trying to fit these little unit squares in there, like that, in order to figure out how many of those you have in there, you simply multiply S times S. So the area of a, of a square is S squared. Multiply S times S. Now we don't have a formula for a rhombus, but we do have formulas for trapezoid and parallelogram. Hmm. And in order to motivate those, uh, <coughs> we have to do some pictures. The uh, formula for the parallelogram goes this way. Let's create a height. So we drop a line down to the base that forms a right angle, just like we did over there. This is called H. Uh, usually with parallelograms, they don't use L and W. They use uh, H and B. B is the distance of the base. Now remember, that's this distance up here, because parallelograms are equal and opposite. 
So the area for the parallelogram is going to be base times height. Base times height. Now you might say, well, why is it base times height? I need for you to sort of visualize something here. And I'll do it in a different color. I'm going to take this triangle over here. This is a right triangle. And I'm going to cut it out, so to speak. This is going to be a cut and paste thing. I'm going to take that, slide it over to here. And now, just look at what's left. All of a sudden, you've got a rectangle. And what's the area for a rectangle? Well, it's the long distance times the vertical distance. Lanes times width. But in terms of the letters we're using, the, the width would be H and the length would be B. This B would slide over also, it's still B. So B times H gives you the area of the parallelogram. Now this one over here, that's, that's a little trickier. The visualization for that's kind of weird. Imagine taking this thing, and first of all, I'm going to flip it over. Okay? So the long base is going to go on top now, and I'm going to slide that over this way so that I actually have something that looks like this. Let me just get some measurements going here so it'll look fairly accurate. And the short base will be down here. And that's uh, nine and a half. And then, of course, you have to draw the other side over here. Now, all I've got is two trapezoids here. They're identical. One is flipped over and slid over that way. Huh? So you've got two figures. But what do you have here? Well, you've actually got one large figure. Huh? And that one large figure is a parallelogram. Strange but true. So this would be A down here now. This would be B up there. And still, the height is that much right there. Huh? And we know the formula for the area of a parallelogram is base times height. OK, so the area of this large figure, I'll call it area L for the large figure, is going to be the base times the height, but the base is B plus A. Multiply that by the height. OK, that's the entire thing. Now, we don't want to know that entire thing. We want to know one of these. We don't want to know two of these. So the area for the trapezoid is actually one half of that. And that's the most complex formula in terms of area. OK, how do you use them? Well, as far as we're concerned, we just plug numbers into letters. So it's not a complicated thing at all. Let's do some examples here. They've got a shape that looks like this. sides are not parallel at all. And of course, they're also a different length. So if you want the area of that thing, you go back to your formula. So it's a plug-in process. One half times the sum of the bases. Well, the bases are vertical now, but they're still the bases. 11 feet plus 9 feet. And then multiply by the height. And the height is given to you in there as 5 feet. OK, so 11 plus 9 is 20 times 5, and you can think of it as 20 over 1 and 5 over 1, so you're multiplying three fractions, but you cancel if you can. There's some canceling here. So that gives you 10 times 5, or 50, and that would be in square feet, or if you wish, 50 
feet with a little exponent to 50 square feet inside that trapezoid. Huh? So the use of it is very straightforward. Just plug numbers in. That's all. Luckily, for people who create cheat sheets, mm -hmm. on page 488, there's a nice, uh, all the formulas put together. So, very nice. All right, let's do what's called a composite figure. 488. Composite. And remember, composite is putting together a couple simpler figures. They've got one, uh, 488 at the bottom there. It says, find the area of the shaded region. It looks like this. And they give you some dimensions here. This is three feet. <laughs> Sorry, three meters. They want to use meters in here. This is six meters. Uh, this is eight meters. And this one up here is 16 meters. They want the area of the shaded region. Now, here's where you have to use some cleverness. Huh? Yeah. You say, well, I could break this down into some triangles and so forth. Yeah, but if you do that, you don't have enough data there to actually figure out the area of those triangles. So that's not the way to go strange but true. What you do is imagine a bigger figure, like this. If I simply connect these two down here, I've got a rectangle. Now, is it possible to get the area of that rectangle? Sure. The area of the rectangle is just simply a product of the length times the width, which means 8 times 16, whatever that turns out to be. I'll calculate it in a minute. All right, but that is the entire thing. It's not just the shaded part. It's also this part in here, which is not shaded. So if we can figure out that that thing in there is a trapezoid, we can get the area of the trapezoid and subtract it from this area. So that's what you do with composite figures. You play around with that, adding and subtracting areas. So the area of the trapezoid is going to be 1 half times the sum of the bases. Well, here's base 1, 16. Here's base 2, 6. 16 plus 6 times the height, but the height is given right there is 3. Okay, so that's 1 half of 6 plus 16 is 22 times 3. Again, some canceling there. You get 33, and that would be square feet, or meters rather, square meters. Okay, 8 times 16, 128, and that's again in square meters. Okay, so subtracting this trapezoid from the rectangle would be 128 minus 33. <laughs> 95 square meters. <laughs> so that's this stuff in here. So you have to play with addition and subtraction of areas when you've got the composite. <laughs> All right, let's do some homework. This is 45 or 43? <laughs> this is 45. <laughs> 